A few days ago, Sierraji spoke about Bhutan, Bhutado, Pasati. This is a very short sentence. But when we are doing this self-research of Satipatthana meditation, this sentence is very important. Observing what is as it is, the way it is. This is very simple. Observing seeing as seeing, hearing as hearing. That is, observing what is as it is. Smelling as smelling, tasting as tasting, touching as touching, knowing as knowing. Bending as bending, stretching as stretching, lifting as lifting, moving as moving, placing as placing. That's all. These are what is, and when we observe them as such, that is observing them as they are, observing placing as placing. So if what is happening and how we are observing it are two different things, then we're missing. This is direct observation. So try making a fist. Try making a fist without paying any attention to it at all. If you don't pay attention, you don't know anything as you clench the fist. But then try clenching your fist Try clenching your hand into a fist, observing it. Put your mind on the hand as you clench it into the fist. So focusing the mind on the hand, then the mind doesn't go somewhere else. This is good. And if at the moment of of clenching, the mind falls on the hand, or the mind knows the clenching, the way it's in in a clenched, closed position, then the mind falls on this object and effort is there, furia is there. Because furia is there, then intense laziness is dispelled. Intense laziness is no good. It's a quality that people who are base and low uh, accept. So when the mind falls on the clenched fist, then there's no way for laziness to arise and also there's no way, uh, there's no greed for either the hand or this clenching, this fist, because sati is present. So there isn't any greed, any craving for the object when sati is present. There's no wondering about what is it or how is it or why is it. So when sati sticks to the hand or sticks to this clenching, then the mind falls collectively on the object. The mind doesn't run anywhere. And this is samadhi, concentration. One isn't knowing the true Dhamma yet, but because the mind is reaching the hand, it's reaching this clenching fist, this is good. Some people don't even get their minds to reach the hand in this way. So this mind that is connecting with the hand, this mind is clean and this is no insignificant thing. When we observe this clenched fist as it is, this is observing what is as it is, Bhutan, Bhutato, Pasati. And we observe this fist as a fist. We observe the clenching as clenching. And in this observation, there's virya, effort, sati, the observing power, samadhi, concentration. 
the, there's the energies of these three qualities. And if, if one observes uh, second by second, in one minute there will be 60 moments of observation. So although there is no knowledge arising yet, one is controlling one's mind. And this is very good. So yogis must calculate in this way. When we've only been practicing a few days, we can't know mind and matter yet, nama and rupa. And knowing cause and effect, their cause and effect relationship is even farther away. We can't know how these uh, things are impermanent and so on. We can't know this type of thing directly yet. We have heard about it or read about it, but we can't know it directly after just a few days. And an analogy is that when we put a piece of food in our mouth, when we chew, right away we don't know um, the taste yet. We know hardness, and then we know softness. And this is knowing what is as it is. As it is. These, are, these are what is really there, hardness, softness. And in this morsel of food, there's any one of six tastes. There could be some sweet uh, sourness, bitter, salty, spicy, bland. And there will be at least one of these types of tastes in the food. And this becomes apparent. So at first, in the first chew, we, we know the, the hardness of the food. And this, as we chew, second chew, we know softness. And as we chew carefully, the taste becomes apparent. Any one of these six tastes may become apparent to us. And this taste is called sarasa, the individual taste. It's also called sabhava, the individual nature or own true nature. So this is an analogy for what we do when we practice. It's like eating the, the bit of food. When we observe what is at the moment, for example, uh, at, the, at the moment of, if we're observing the fist, you know, at first it's just like putting a lump of food in our mouth. It's just, we just know this lump. And if we don't pay attention, we won't know what it, the qualities of what we're eating. We won't know uh, if we speak when we eat, for example. We won't know because our attention is not on the food. So similarly, um, as, we chew, as we chew our food, we know qualities of hard and hardness and softness. Those are the first things that become apparent. And in the case of clenching the fist, when we put our mind on this and we know the clenching, we don't not yet know true nature. We're aware of the, the form or the, 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 the way, the, the shape of the fist, or we're aware of the manner that it's clenching. So as one observes from time to time, one sees the true nature in a gross way. Uh, in a very coarse way. So, as one continues to observe the clenched fist, putting one's mind on it, one goes beyond the form. As one, mind, as one goes beyond the form, the shape of the fist, one goes beyond the manner, the position that the fist is in of clenching, and one comes to feel qualities like stiffness or tension or tightness 
and when there's extreme tightness then it feels bad so then we're aware of vedana the feeling so this is knowing one of the many types of true nature that occur in the moment of clenching the fist if we observe at the moment of arising this is we will see the true nature that's one of the um to observe what to see true nature one must observe at the moment of arising and then it will become apparent so this is what is being said when the buddha said bhutan bhuta to pasati to see what is as it is one has to observe it at the moment of arising when one sees things what is really there as it is then this is one's own knowledge that one gains what we read in books is not our own knowledge what we hear other people talk about we what we hear the teacher say is not our own knowledge only experiential knowledge is our own yogis at the start of practice have three ways of understanding and the first is santana or form and the second is akara that's manner or position and the third is sabhava which is the various kinds of individual nature santana is the form or shape that's the like for example the leg the arm the torso the neck all these parts of the body this is seeing on that level seeing the shape of the leg shape of the arm shape of the head and so on this is seeing uh, the form and sometimes you know these parts of our body they bend they stretch there's leaning to one side there's going standing sitting lying lifting moving placing blinking opening and closing the eyes so this is these are all the different types of akara or manner or position that the various parts of the body can be in so this is the second level of knowing and then sabhava within that movement of leaning bending stretching and so on within that movement there's mind and matter which are there nama and rupa which are there and as we do self research as we are now we have to apply sati in order to see the true nature that is in us an example is observation of what happens when we go from a standing posture to sitting down so the body standing this is the uh the body the body as a whole is the form standing is the standing up is the manner and as we sit down bit by bit we can understand uh, on a gross level that the changes that happen the body goes from standing to sitting children under children can understand uh, the difference between standing and sitting and how how it changes but to know what is really there most people don't know what is really involved in the act in the act of going from standing to sitting not even 1% of people know in order to sit down there's the intention to sit down and when that intention becomes strong then one decides to sit 
and from that point sitting down happens there's a series of intentions to sit and a series of sitting down sitting down bit by bit the body becomes soft heavy stiff and 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 bit by bit uh, it it goes from standing to sitting so if we do it quickly go from standing to sitting down quickly we won't know anything about what happens but if we do it carefully inch by inch observing inch by inch bit by bit and focusing on our mind and f- focusing our mind on the body at the time of sitting down we'll see that there is a series of intentions to sit and a series of sitting down so it's like turning on the switch turning on the light switch when one turns on the light switch electricity flows and the light turns on so when we turn on the relevant switch then the energy created by the mind causes movement that's using the analogy when we um, when intention causes sitting down it's like the relevant switch turning it on and then there's energy produced that causes movement so this how movement is caused is a bit like the way electricity flows when electricity flows the light goes on and in the same way when there's the intention to sit down occurring in a series then sitting down will happen if there's no intention happening one by one then there will be no sitting down no sitting down will happen so the sitting down happens in the same way as the light going on as a result of turning on the switch so when the light goes on there are two things involved the electricity flows and then the light goes on and in the process of sitting down there's the intention and then the physical sitting down these two things so try observing in the moment of sitting down try to observe it in a careful way second by second if one doesn't have enough mental energy yet then the mind will fall on the body one will know the shape of the body or one will know the position that it is in of sitting down gradually but even though one doesn't uh, know further than that this is still good because the mind is not running anywhere so this is good and as one focuses carefully sometimes it will become apparent that there's stiffness or that there's tension or that there's a heaviness and when one feels off balance and has to uh, adjust has to move one's arms because the body's become out of balance one feels uncomfortable this is fade enough so at the start of the practice it's not easy to know the mind the intention to sit down but if one continues to practice then one will come to see the intention too when the body sits down sitting down is manner it's the it's the position that the body is in 
and as one's mental energy becomes strong, one will know the true nature that happens in that moment. Our observation is in order to see this true nature. And once you understand this concept, you know you can understand what is happening in every other movement that we make. When sitting down like that, observing the sitting down, one puts one's mind on the position of sitting down, on that act of sitting down, inch by inch. And one aims the mind so that the mind is focused accurately. One also applies effort so that the mind gets there to the sitting down. The mind has to be not sluggish or slow. The mind must be active. As soon as the sitting down happens, one has to apply effort. And in uh, in doing that, then laziness, the unwholesome quality of laziness, is no longer present because effort, virya, has taken its place so that laziness is removed. And the aim makes the mind focus accurately on the object. So when one does this, the mind doesn't go elsewhere. Because we live in a world of sense of the senses, The human tendency is to want to see good things, hear good things, smell, taste, touch good things. But this type of thought can't enter our mind stream because one is protecting one's mind with sati. The mind then doesn't run elsewhere. It falls collectedly on the object. So there's no thinking about sense objects. This tendency is suppressed and the mind doesn't scatter. It sticks to the object. The mind is collected. Each second of the time, there's virya, sati, and samadhi present, effort, observation, and concentration. So the mind having these qualities is clean. And if one is observing like this with these three qualities, effort, sati, and samadhi, every second, then in in one minute there will be 60 moments of observation. And in five minutes, 120. And in, sorry, 360, I'm sorry, my math is bad. And in one hour, there will be 3,600. So these three qualities are known as the samadhi kanda, the uh, samadhi group, concentration group, virya, sati, and samadhi. This is to be developed. If it's not there, then we have to create it. This is called upadana, to give a start to what is not yet there. And then, so that we don't lose that which has been started, we have to enlarge it. This is called uh, vudana. And we enlarge, we multiply this clean mind by repeated observation. And this repeated observation makes the mind firm. So when we do this a lot, then eventually knowledge arises. So the mind falls collectively on the object, and sometimes one knows stiffness. The mind falls on stiffness. When the mind falls on tension, one knows tension. When the mind falls on heaviness, one knows heaviness and so on. So when the mind uh, 
whatever the mind falls on, we know it accordingly. And if we analyze what is happening in this moment, there's application of effort to get the mind to the object at the moment it is happening. Sati is sticking to the object, and because of that, the mind falls collectively on the object. This is samadhi. There's accurate aim so that our mind is focused exactly. The the mind has the object exactly in focus. And this is vitaka, this quality of accurate aim. And then there's knowing, which is panya. So the first three of these factors, virya, sati, and samadhi, this is the samadhi kanda, the concentration group. And the second two factors, vitaka, or accurate aim, and panya, knowledge, these are the panya kanda, or the wisdom group. So these are five factors that are present in the moment of observation. When we go from standing to sitting down, bit by bit, observing as it happens, then when there's, then there's effort, sati and samadhi, the samadhi kanda is present. There's aiming, which is a jhanic factor, and knowledge also occurs. These happen because one observes moment by moment. One observes the act of sitting down as it is happening, bit by bit. So we have heard about this. And when we really apply effort with the faith, in the benefits, with a desire to observe, or with the desire to be free of defilement, or with the desire to know true nature, then when effort, sati, and samadhi are complete, knowledge will arise. So, if one observes respectfully, then the mind will become clean. So this is something that we've heard about. We have to have the desire for this to happen. We, have, we should have chanda for this to happen. We can't not want this. And if we do, then as we sit down, moment by moment, we will be gaining energy. We will be gaining mental energy. We won't be losing energy. We'll be developing mental energies as we observe the sitting down process. So if one doesn't have faith, or one doesn't have any desire to gain the benefits, then there won't be any effort to do the practice, and then one won't know. So Siyadoji sees some yogis who are careless, who don't uh, respect the practice, they look here and there. Doing the practice, one is supposed to keep to oneself, one is supposed to observe one's own phenomena, But these yogis look here and there, all over the place. So if one applies oneself, one will gain the samadhi kanda. One will will develop that. One will gain the, the panya kanda, the wisdom group. This is what one gains if one works, applies oneself respectfully. But if one has no faith, 
and no chanda, no desire to uh, gain the results of the practice, then every moment one is losing, losing out on the chance to get these things, these five factors. So in one minute of, care, of carelessness, that's the one minute of loss. And in five minutes, there will be five minutes of loss. So this work is incredibly valuable. And if one reflects on how valuable it is, then one will work at it and one will get the Dhamma in a short time. When we observe what is as it is, then we are able to dispel ignorance. Ignorance doesn't know the true Dhamma when it is happening, but our observation dispels this ignorance. And at this moment, there's knowledge. And this knowledge doesn't occur alone. It occurs together with virya, sati, and samadhi, effort, observation, and concentration. So in this, there is the samadhi kanda. And there's also the factor of aiming. Aiming together with knowledge makes up the panya kanda, the wisdom group. Or another way of looking at it is that there is the training of samadhi present and the training of panya. The training of samadhi, samadhi seka, overcomes the obsessive defilements, the pariyotana, kilesas. Or if these things, if uh, the samadhi will, um, sorry, if those happen to arise, then one quickly dis can dispel them. For the most part, one can keep them suppressed. This is like fire prevention. When one wants to prevent fire, one takes action in advance. But if the fire breaks out, one is prepared to put it out quickly. And the samadhi kanda is like that with regard to the obsessive defilements. So when the mind falls collectively on the object and accurately on the object, then there are two more factors that are involved, this accurate aim together with knowledge. So in all, there's five factors of the path that are present at this time, and this is called the forerunner path the fivefold path. At this time, while we're practicing, there's not any way in which we're going to transgress. There's no opportunity for us to break our sila. But we have the intention to act well, to not, to not commit wrong. We have the intention to speak in a friendly way to speak what is true, to speak what is beneficial. And we have the intention to avoid killing, avoid adultery, avoid stealing, whether it's in uh, normal life or in any type of livelihood. We have, uh, we have the intention to keep our sila pure. So although we're not in a situation where we are actively faced, with the potent potential to transgress. Uh, we have the intention to keep sila, so therefore the factors of the sila portion of the path are present. So every moment of observation, our sila is also complete. And this means that there are all factors of the Eightfold Path involved in a moment of observation. In other words, there are the three groups. The, um, the sila group, the samadhi group, and the panya group. Or one can think of it in terms of training. 
in the in the moment of observation, the training of sila, of samadhi, and of panya are all involved. The training of sila overcomes the gross transgressions, gross defilements, the ones that uh, take place on physical and verbal level. The samadhi kanda eliminates the obsessive defilements. And the panya kanda uproots the latent defilements, the ones that lie dormant. So when one reaches this situation, uh, one should understand that in every moment of observation, one is getting a profit on one's existence. And if, on the other hand, in every moment one doesn't observe what is happening, the arising object, then one is losing this. So people who came here to get this benefit, if one doesn't work, then work respectfully to gain the benefits of the practice, then one is losing. So one has to just value this time. This time is very valuable. And valuing the time here, work respectfully. While one is applying oneself to observing the arising object, to the practice, this creates energy. It's like driving a car. We have to drive our car in order to keep the battery charged. If we don't drive the car in time, the battery will run down and it will die. So, like this, we have to also keep our battery charged by observing the object every moment. So Sayadawji urges us all to keep our batteries charged by observing the object every moment of the time. <laughs>